what is bite federal who's it for i read the mission statement and man i said we we invited the right person onto today's show <laughs> oh thank you thank you guys for having me uh love you guys and love the energy in the show it's awesome we uh, so bite federal has been around since uh late 2016 and it got started by uh three guys here in uh the venice area venice florida uh they started as a bitcoin atm company and uh Right now, currently have about 1,400 Bitcoin ATMs in the United States, about 60 in Australia, and four brand new as of last week in Suriname with Maya Parabo. Um, so we're, we're hoping to see that become the next uh, great Bitcoin economy. Um, so the ATM is where we start, and the ATM is, is really, for me, looks like our brick and mortar pipeline for, for access to Bitcoin uh, for cash. Uh, but the bigger mission is to build uh, basically a suite of financial services around the Bitcoin blockchain. We all believe that Bitcoin is the premier financial collateral on the planet, and therefore it is going to become the bedrock of all your financial activity moving forward. So you should have access to a whole suite of financial services that interact with the Bitcoin blockchain. So we're building a mobile wallet. Uh, number one uh, feature in the mobile, well, the mobile wallet does exist today as a non-custodial Bitcoin wallet and Lightning wallet, uh, but we're adding Bitcoin buys into the wallet. So we hope that by maybe the end of December, if not early January, you're going to be able to have a full-fledged checking account with a routing number in our wallet. You'll be able to on-ramp fiat into the wallet, uh, use it just like you would use Cash App. So you have full checking functionality in your wallet right alongside your non-custodial Bitcoin wallet where you get to control your private keys. We don't custody anybody's coins. So, so we'll be able to, you'll be able to move Bitcoin back and forth uh, or you'll be able to do exchanges in wallet. You'll be able to send, receive, and custody uh, your Bitcoin and, and fiat in the wallet. Right after that, the next mission is to bring a debit card back in the wallet, which we, we, we had these features in the past, like I, like I described. So the debit card will be connected to your checking account and you'll be able to spend right out of your wallet. So, you know, the mission or our tagline is go bank yourself. And that's really what we're trying to build. Everything you would need to be your own bank and, and uh, Bitcoin being the center of that. After that, um, we've developed a POS system. We have about 45 merchants right now in the United States using our POS system. Uh, it's Lightning and Bitcoin enabled. Um, and we have a web wallet where uh, you could you can order an actual smart terminal if you wanted to sit alongside your credit card uh, processing machine. Uh, the web wallet also tracks all your transactions, your cost base. You can process returns, anything you need to do there on a POS functionality. It's also a payment gateway, so you can embed it in a shopping cart. You can you can, uh, we're working on a streaming platform for people that want to be able to accept lightning through uh, streaming sats uh, during, during a podcasting. And uh, we're working with some people in Argentina that are, that are using that right now. Um, last, the, the, another great thing we're working on is a real estate platform. Um, so we have uh, partnered with a, a company here in the United States called NEO, it stands for New Estate Only. They're live in Florida and Texas right now. You can go on their website and you can see that they work with big developers and publicly traded companies that are building big communities in Florida and Texas. And soon, uh, in the not too distant future, again, maybe maybe this month, you're going to start, or in December, you're going to start to see Buy With Bitcoin featured in their site. And when you click on Buy With Bitcoin, you'll be able to process your escrow deposit and your closing payment on that real estate through our platform. So these are uh, all things that are, are currently in the works along with, you know, of course, we want to get into lending against your Bitcoin. Uh, we have um, some of the stuff I probably shouldn't even talk about, but we have some really cool things coming down the road where you'll be able to notarize documents, images, video uh, right directly into the Bitcoin blockchain so that you can store those crucial documents forever. Uh, and, and a whole suite of other financial services, again, with the mission of that you'll be able to bank yourself and run your financial life on the Bitcoin blockchain through our financial services. Incredible. So it, it, it sounds like you're building a whole suite of, of products so that people can actually start living off their Bitcoin 
rather Ooh. than this on and off ramp, you know, kind of BS. And then you're dealing with hostile banks that, you know, if, for example, I believe it was Chase that just like started debanking people uh, just because they, you know, decided yeah. to buy Bitcoin on Coinbase or they would flat out tell you, like, you can't send money to Coinbase at all. Yeah, what are you talking about? It's you really know, who, crazy. Whose money is it, bro? <laughs> it, it's crazy, right? Because like we we would love to work with banks. Honestly, we would love to be able to partner with them or work with them. But they're not they don't treat us like, uh, you know, a legitimate organization. I think like, again, like all the stuff we talked about in 2020. Uh, we think that's all going to change in 2025 and um and we look forward to that because a good banking partner that understands the industry and understands the value of the bitcoin blockchain is is, is not if they just align with the industry they're going to do really really well so a, a good banking partner love that uh, a, a banking partner that is constantly uh going up against you, trying to shut you down, get in your way. Of course, that's that's a major problem. We've been lucky enough to find a few banks that have been just a joy to work with, and they have uh, got helped us get to where we are. So it's not all banks. It's but but there are a lot of banks in that are just afraid of this industry, just like they're afraid of cannabis or they're they're afraid of other other sectors of the economy. Um, and it's and I've worked in those banks, so I know it's coming from their regulator. Many of them want to do this business and their regulator won't let them or, or put such massive hurdles in front of them pursuing it that it's not worth it. It's not worth their, the risk, right? So, so I think once those regulatory hurdles are removed or regulation is clarified or they just simply look at us as a legit business and because we can match, if not better, the regulatory hurdles that they're putting in front of us. It's just a matter of them feeling comfortable that they can bank a Bitcoin business. And once that happens, it's game on. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. And, and this is why, and we got a lot of heat for this, Paul, but we were talking about the importance of this previous election mm -hmm. and from a regulatory perspective. And we were talking about like, I'm like, guys, like, and then, you know, people get a mo and I, and I empathize with that. I understand, you know, um, orange, orange man is not perfect, right? He's got his flaws, but I, I kept saying, it. I was like, guys, like this is a two party system, whether you like it or not. Uh, one party has been very hostile towards our industry. Uh, and the more, the more is being discovered by the day. Right. Um, I would say that they didn't follow the rules at all. Um, mm -hmm. and one party has made it part of their official party platform that they're going to protect the industry. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, it's not perfect, but you have a, you have a choice to make here. And, um, you know, I'm very glad that the election went in a certain way because as a, you know, Bitcoin entrepreneur, we're, we're a media play, but as a Bitcoin entrepreneur, it's like, yeah, I mean, this does affect you, especially if you are based in the United States. So, you know, this is, this is pretty crazy. This is, this is pretty nuts. And I think it is very positive. And I do agree with you, Paul, wholeheartedly that I think that things are going to change in 2025. Now, are we going to get everything we want? I don't know, but I, it's, I think I suspect it's going to be better than the current regulatory environment yeah. under the current administration. So, and, and we don't need protection, right? We just, we just need, need to be a, left we, alone. Exactly. We just need equal. We just need uh, the, to be the rules to be the same across the board and, and equal and equal access. Um, because I truly believe some of the smartest people on the planet are in this industry uh, and they can uh, build solutions to get us to where uh, the, the future is going. Uh, w w they can make the United States a, uh, a premier place for crypto and Bitcoin businesses going forward. Uh, but we just need to have the same playing field as our competitors. And that just hasn't been the case. It's, it's literally been trying to fight the, the, some of the biggest financial institutions in the world with a regulator that's hostile to you and with one arm and one leg tied behind your back. And we're still winning. So, so I, you know, I look at when, when the, when the playing field is fair and equal, um, everybody's going to be coming charging down the field with amazing products and services 
And Byte Federal is going to be one of those players and it's going to benefit everybody on the planet. If you want to take control of your finance and control of your future and you want to, right? The American dream was all about people uh, building a great life for themselves the way they wanted to build it and, and for the benefit of the, their families, right? Well, how hard is that to do today in the traditional financial system? It's, it's incredibly impossible. difficult. Right? I would say it's so, impossible. It, it, so Paul, I would, I, I would say you are, it, it's, it's difficult, but I would say if you are a, a zoomer or millennial, it's, it's flat out. I would say exactly. almost impossible. If I did not have Bitcoin, like, right. you know, I, I don't know what I would yeah. do. Even if you are extremely successful, right? Even if you're extremely successful, I would say you still could not afford, and Paul, you know this, we live in Florida, right? You could still not afford a, a, a reasonable home, even if you're performing extremely well at my age in terms of income. Um, it's like the system is set up where it's like, you're not meant to own anything. You can rent right. a place and you can have it a very nice place for, for, for if you have a decent income, but forget about trying to get a decent home. Like, especially right. if you live in one of like the, like, like I live in Miami, right? Like if I didn't have Bitcoin, like, oh my God, I don't know what I would be doing. Right. So, uh, yeah, I 100% agree with you. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, that's okay. You know, I, I have millennial friends that are in the same boat. You know, what, what do I do? How am I ever going to afford a house? How do I buy a house? And I, I you know, and I, I, you need to just buy the Bitcoin. Just don't worry about buying the house, buy the Bitcoin because Bitcoin's growing at, 50% annually, your home, the best home you could buy is going to average 6% annually. So, so take that down payment on your home, buy Bitcoin. And at some point you'll be able to afford a home you never thought you could afford. Amen. And that doesn't even come into, uh, the, uh, the bigger discussion of demonetizing real estate that we could see real estate become cheaper down down the road right because you know that we're just trying to keep things simple in these in these early orange pill discussions um but man when you start to realize the growth rate of bitcoin let's just say bitcoin starts with keeping up with inflation then you have monetary devaluation then you have adoption globally by people states sovereigns militaries on and on and on the growth rate in bitcoin isn't going to slow down for for many many decades so so we're still so early in just store of value adoption which is why at by federal we're we're you know we're focused on the atms in wallet purchases web purchases and then after that lending and pos and and you know medium of exchange but the, i mean the priority is people still need to get Bitcoin on their personal balance sheet. That should be everybody's main priority. And if you haven't woken up to that yet, it's not too late. I hear so many people, well, you, you guys said it earlier, right? I've gotten uh, three phone calls in the last month of like, do you think I should get Bitcoin, right? These are people that have known that I've been in Bitcoin for some time and, and that I talk to about it on a regular basis and, and like they're being triggered. Either they're being triggered by Trump or they're being triggered by the price or they're you know, being, being triggered by uh, it being more prevalent in the news. But I'm hopeful because this is very early to be getting those calls in a bull cycle. Usually I get those calls near the top and we're just breaking into all time highs. And we know from the cycles and we know from the amount of news flow that's happening around the globe that we could have quite a ways to go before we hit a top. Uh, but so, you know, you, you, you try and lead those people into a long term acquisition mindset, not, oh, I'm going to buy it, sell it and then get my house. I'm going to buy it, sell it, then get whatever they're trying to get. Um, you really have to take care of those people. Right. We want them to become Bitcoiners. We want this to benefit their their entire life, their family, their future generations, not just just to get X, Y, Z item. So, so we starts with hodling, then at some point we're going to move into medium of exchange, uh, and all the financial services that, that are built around that. 
Uh, but there's still so much to do in just getting Bitcoin in people's hands. So you've heard Bitcoin is the new gold rush by now. As world leaders on all sides have endorsed it as the future of money, and now you're looking to get started, we'll show you how. It's actually easier than you think. First, go to your nearest Byte Federal ATM and turn your cash to coin. Byte Federal has over 1,200 locations around the country with the highest daily limits. Go to our website, bytefederal.com, to find the nearest ATM to you. Log in to any wallet, then create an account, deposit your U.S. cash, and instantly convert it to Bitcoin. That's it. We are the only U.S. manufacturer and operator in the Bitcoin ATM industry, and our U.S.-based live customer service is second to none. Go on, give it a whirl, and don't get left behind. Click the link below.